Hi guys, I'm Stuart, he's Alan, and this is Outdoor Basics. Daddy. And you shouldn't have tried any of this stuff at home. Okay dudes, so um, here we go. This is a LK35. I got it years ago. Um, like way back when we first started doing this sort of thing. I was watching stuff on YouTube and that and I seen that everybody that was into a bit of bushcraft was into the LK35 and I got one. Um, and my plan was to send it away and get it modified by like one of the, the tails, um, either like Dragons or JJ's. Um, trippers or something and these are these are companies here in the UK that modify soldiers equipment for them they've modified loads of my equipment while I was in the military and they're absolutely outstanding and there's also loads of like small tailors like guys within units and stuff that have developed good reputations and modifying kits so I was thinking I can down that route then I started to get fairly decent on a sewing machine myself and then maybe last year um, at some point I decided you know what I'm just going to go for it um, and I kind of had a go at modifying the rucksack myself just with the features that I like um, on, on a day sack. A lot of my day sacks I base it off of a Berkhausman row that was modified for me by, I think it was Dragon back in the day um, and I used that for a lot of my military career and it was just an outstanding wee day sack and I carry these principles forward into bushcraft. So first thing I did which you'll see in the outside was I changed over the metal buckles um, for plastic kind of buckles here. I did it on the front and I did it on the top um, and I've done it with a kind of Z stitch here multi times. I went over it absolutely solid. Been using it for months and it's it, it's bomb proof. Um, and I did it on the top there as well. I just kept that on the top in case I wanted to put anything on, on there. Um, was that there. So it doesn't disappear. Uh, just makes it much easier to use. And I like that because I can have my roll mat kind of underneath the top flap. Put that there. Um, so I always carry my roll mat and if you look through our videos you'll see that it's a German folding mat. However it's got a kit sheet or a kip sheet. Uh, I stitched it on myself on the outside of the mat. Kind of makes it a more waterproof, durable mat. Um, excellent wee addition to be honest. Um, next thing I did was stitch molly onto the front here. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it. When I opened it up, I, I measured the distance out. Um, and this takes three um, Warrior Assault System medium sized utility pouches. Just molly onto the front there and that can be absolutely awesome. Um, if I'm having to carry more kit because maybe I've got my kids out with me or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's the next addition that I put on was adding molly. The kind of main addition that I made really, as you'll notice at the side of the pack, was I added these large mesh pockets onto the side. And for any of the lads that have had kit modified, like a Monroe or anything like that, it's very reminiscent of that. I just opened up the side of the pack, measured it out, and put the mesh in um, there. What you'll see what I did at the bottom there was I folded it back in itself so that it kind of bellows, it allows that bellow effect um, so I can fit more in and then I just added these compression straps so that when it's heavily loaded I can pull these compression straps in and it will squeeze and compress all the pack nice and tight to pull the weight closer to the frame, closer to my back so that's why I got those compression straps, it's not so much for strapping anything on in the outside it is what it says in the tin, it's a compression strap it's when it's a fully loaded, heavily loaded pack, I can squeeze it all nice and tight and pull the, the weight closer to the frame so it's not hanging off my back. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's, that was what I did there. And it's just kind of get the wee tire at the top. And I did the exact same on both sides. I'll go through what's in, in them so you can see the amount of stuff that they have in them. It takes a lot of kit. Yeah, and I did the exact same on both sides. On the rear, one of the main things I did was just kind of using these wee slider things, was add a carry handle. 
um, and that just makes it much easier for A, moving the rucksack around and B, having the rucksack up off the ground when I'm not using it. Um, next thing I did uh, was add these shoulder straps. Now me personally, I don't like short shoulder straps. I like long shoulder straps that are going to go down under my armpit and distribute the weight. I don't like really th fat padded squishy shoulder straps. They don't distribute the weight, they just kind of crush it down. I like wider, stiff shoulder straps and that really distributes the weight over my shoulders and my body far, far better. Um, and you'll see that I've done that across a lot of my, my rucksacks. I just kind of followed the Aris principle really. Um, stitched a loop here, see I've got the wee box stitch, stitched a loop and attached it on there. You'll notice that in a lot of the rucksacks that I make and or buy, um, I prefer these Fastex buckles there. Um, the amount of weight that this could hold is more than I would be able to carry in the rucksack really. That, that would, that's absolutely bomb proof. But the reason I really, really like this is if I'm yomping around with this, this rucksack on and I fall over and have a bad mechanical injury, let's say it's a heavy rucksack, I fall over, I land badly and I break this arm. Trying to manipulate my arm, if I broke my arm or my shoulder or something, out of the strap of the rucksack could become a bit of an issue. Whereas if I can just unpop that, it's going to make it much easier for me to get myself out of that situation. Um, so yeah, that's why I prefer I prefer those buckles there, just in case. And as I say, all I did was get some 500D Cordura, uh, some mesh, the same mesh that's on the sides, and I put it over the top of some uh, thick, 10 mil kind of heavy duty rubber floor mat. I used a uh, flooring mat and cut it up. Yep, and attached it at the top. Pretty much the same Mary Old Alice ones in that do. Um, as far as a waist belt goes, I used the waist belt from my Outback Packs uh, Alice pack that I got made up. Best hippo pad ever, and I don't think I could make one as good, and it takes two seconds to just transition them off between the rucksacks. So yeah, that's that's the, the bulk of the modifications that I made myself. Changed the shoulder straps for far better shoulder straps, added a carry handle, added a far superior waist belt, added these large mesh pockets onto the side to um, carry kit, molly strapping onto the front in case I want to put any molly pouches on, and then changed all the buckles over for these uh, solid Fastex ones. So yeah, that's what I did to modify my LK35. Um, nice and simple for part two of the LK35. So as I said, this is my heavily modified LK35. Um, I've had it for a good few years and I modified it maybe a yearish ago and it's been absolutely awesome. Especially through the summer with the frame, been able to hold the pack off my back so that it could circulate air and would allow me to breathe. I've just kind of really started to appreciate framed rucksacks. I really, really like this wee rucksack. So yeah, no more waffling, no more for, uh, messing about. Let's get into what I carry. Okay, so first and foremost, before I go into what I carry in my rucksack for the winter, I'm going to talk about what I wear. And before you go into any fancy kit in there, you should talk, think about what you're wearing on your person, your most immediate kit. On my feet, I've got a good pair of comfortable Gore-Tex boots, and if it was snowing or really bad weather, I would switch them over to my all-leather lower boots. Um, again, on my legs, I've got a pair of Helicon Tex Pilgrim trousers, um, made of Dura canvas. They're very, very windproof, very durable, very comfortable, very fast drying should they get wet. A multitude of pockets, and within the pockets, look at our pocket contents video. Um, I have everything that I would need, i.e. fire steels, lighters, uh, field dressings, tourniquets, all sorts of stuff. Next up, I have again my Helicon Tex Pilgrim smock. I've kind of treated this with a waterproofing spray. It's not 100% waterproof, but it is fairly water repellent. Into that, it is incredibly windproof. On top of that, it dries very, very quick. And it's wind chill through uh, getting wet and then the wind cutting through you that kills you. This really cuts the wind out. I've got a hat on my head. Um, and yeah, I carry gloves and stuff like that in my pockets as well. So your outer kind of clothing should match the environment that you're in and the time of year that you're in. Remember, look at a layering video um, for layering your equipment, uh, scaling it up and down. But in general, most of the time, I've got a good pair of comfortable Gore-Tex breathable boots on, my Helicon-Tex Pilgrim pants, either a t-shirt, 
um, with a, a kind of jumper or my pilgrim smock because it's I can ventilate this pilgrim smock so I can wear it in um, most conditions to be honest absolutely excellent okay so now on to the pack on the front of the pack here I keep my uh, lined mat and that's so when I stop I've got something to kneel down on sit on and it's keeping me up off the wet cold ground um, and that's just essential it can act as a sit mat kneel mat whatever um, and that's just my German folding mat that I've lined with the old kip sheet. And that's on the outside immediately, so I would unbuckle that and then I can get to this. Okay, so the reason that I like these side pockets is before I even go into my main pack, I can, I can sort my admin out, I can stop. So on this side here, I have my British military jungle uh, tarp. If you look through our videos, you'll see I've done a review of this. It's slightly smaller than the British military basher, um, but it's really lightweight. It can look clipped together into a sort of kind of bivy bag type thing. Um, it's just an excellent wee tarp. Really, really lightweight. Goes down small. And it fits perfectly into that mesh bag on the side. So, yeah, excellent. So, I, f I stop and I can get a tarp, I can get a tarp up over my head instantly, get the rain off my head, get any of the bad weather, even the sun, get it off my head. Yes, in Scotland sometimes we do have sun. Um, I can get a, a, a shelter up and get myself out of the elements immediately before I've even went into the main bag. Next on this side, I have my water bottle. I also have my cup my fish mouth spreader, a metal straw, a lighter and stuff like that. So I have my canteen set basically. So I can stop, get a drink or get my food ready. And just at the bottom of that pouch here, I have my fire kit. So before I went into my main pack, I can stop, get a shelter up, get myself off the cold, cold wet ground, get a fire on the go and get myself a, a hot drink on the go. So yeah, it's just a good way and, not, and then I don't need to rifle through the main pack. Uh, another wee thing that I didn't mention in the last video on modifications that I made, I changed this over to 550 in a basic plastic uh, kind of slider, I suppose you'd call these things. Inside it, I'm just going to talk through it in order. I have it kind of packed in order of use or order of likelihood. In this top section here, I'd probably have a, a, a bag of food that I could just move out the way. Um, but that, that's already out. Okay, so here, first thing tucked just off the back is my heavy duty leather gloves. And that's in case I want to take my water, my, my cup, on and off of the fire without melting my hands off or I'm doing anything that I don't want to kind of burn or cut my hands. So heavy, heavy duty leather gloves. Next, can I, you see here, if you look down in the pack just now, everything's laid out in its own individual pouch so that it's really easy access. Um, and I'll take them out in order and let you see that now. But you'll see, um, if you look at it, my tools are kind of neatly across the back there so I can see and access them independently. And all the kit is individually pouched um, so I can access that. Okay, so let's talk through that. Always on the same side, I have my first aid kit. I have quite a, a, a comprehensive and robust first aid kit and there's nothing obstructing it. It's just there, I can get it out and use it whenever I need it. God forbid um, there's ever a, 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 a boo-boo or anything like that. You'll notice in this pocket, I have an FFD and a tourniquet just there or I carry them on the elastics on my belt. I also have another set in here, um, mainly because this thing, as far as things like first field dressings or Israeli bandages as everybody calls them you always kind of want to take the principle of two is one, one is none but three is always better um, because if it's bad enough that I would need to put an Israeli bandage on it I would rather have an extra one just in case so yeah um, and who says it's only going to be one puncture wound God forbid you know who knows what could happen so an abundance of first aid kit but I digress get first aid training, proper first aid training from a reputable source and then carry the, the appropriate kit that you know how to use. 
I say this all the time, but I'm just going to go back to it. Get first aid tra training on kit that you know how to use. There's no point in having a, having a chest seal when you don't know how to use it. Anyway, next. Um, next most commonly used thing out in my pack would be my possibles pouch. My possibles pouch. And I'll just quickly go through what is in my possibles pouch just now. It's a two seconder. Um, a load of paracord. I've got quality paracord on the bottom and then kind of cheaper stuff on the top. That's on a spool. Some uh, rubber sight work gloves. These are really, really good in the rain, these things. I find them really good anyway. In wet, cold conditions, um, these just give me that wee bit of extra like, grip when I'm working with knives and tools and stuff like that. So they are absolutely fantastic and they're cheap as chips. Um, I think they were like two quid or something like that at a B&Q. Um, some, some rubber contact gloves. Um, a wee sharpening, a uh, diamond sharpening stone. Or a work sharp, depending on what one I've got out with me. Some Gorilla tape, because if you can't fix it with Black Nasty, you can't fix it. A backup lighter. Uh, some smidge. If you haven't heard of the Scottish Midgey, if you imagine the most ferocious, terrifying individual thing in the universe, it's the Scottish Midgey. So yeah, um, some Midgey repellent. And this also repels ticks and stuff like that, because ticks are just horrible things. Um, so yeah, I always carry that with me. Nice sweet cheap and cheerful head torch. And then probably my most valuable knife. My favourite knife really, can do everything. My Leatherman Wave. Um, and it's got outdoor basics on it. I love that knife. Um, storming back it. That's my possibles pouch. Loads of wee bits and bobs that I can do there um, for anything that I might be doing in the woods. Next, I have my TRC Outdoors Shiritsu shirt. This is like my first layer of warm kit. If it starts to get a bit chilly, I would bang this on underneath my uh, Pilgrim smock and the amount of warmth this gives for weight is off the scale. If it's really cold in the winter, I would maybe bring the Shiritsu shirt trousers with me as well. So I would have the full suit that I could bang under this or over this if I have to. Um, and it's going to keep me really, really warm. Next, I have my Outdoor Basics Survival Scarf. Check a wee review of that out. Um, absolutely outstanding bit of warm kit. Um, and it can also be used as a midget head net and all sorts of stuff. Because I can't overestimate uh, emphasise rather how horrible the Scottish midge is. So yeah, that's my kind of first layer of warm kit. If I start to feel it getting a bit cold in the winter, I'll get my parasilk top on for TRC Outdoors and I'll get my kind of outdoor basic survival scarf. And the material was given to me by the awesome uh, TRC Outdoors, so that I really appreciate that, guys. As far as main kit goes, last but by no means least, I've doubled this up um, in a canoe sack. I have my Widow 10 Wooby hoodie and Tiger Stripe because obviously it's Ali and Ali saves lives. Um, so my Wooby hoodie, really, really warm, really, really lightweight, and it feels really nice, kind of against your skin. Um, this is awesome, so I love a Wooby hoodie. Uh, I'll just put that there. So that's my kind of second level of warmers. If it starts to get really, really cold, I can upscale my warmers onto my Wooby hoodie, and that's going to be perfect. Like I said, this isn't waterproof, but it's water repellent. But if I feel the heavens are starting to open up and it's starting to get a wee bit bad, I'll switch over to my Ridgeline Pintail Smock. Um, this is my kind of second or third Ridgeline jacket and I absolutely love them. I really love this material. Um, it's like a kind of quiet tex. I hate Gore-Tex because it sounds like you're wearing a crisp packet or a potato chip packet, like wah, 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 as, you're, as you're moving through the woods and I absolutely hate it. Um, so I prefer this because there's no sound off it. It's kind of perfect. Um, it's like a kind of mole skin this. It takes the water in, takes it down to the bottom and then pushes it back to the surface of the material so it never gets through onto you. People say, I've heard a few people say that they found the ridgeline smocks not very breathable. 
Um, I've never really had that experience. Maybe I'm not a sweater, I don't know. I think I sweat. Um, I, I find it fine because I just vent it at the bottom. I completely loosen it up at the bottom and loosen it off at the neck. And if my activity level is slightly higher, um, and it's good enough for me, I don't feel I sweat too much. As far as tools go, um, I keep them in this pocket along the back. I have my Silky Big Boy, absolutely outstanding bit of kit. I have my Fiskars X7, again, absolutely outstanding bit of kit. And if I want to use my kind of bigger knife eh, round my waist, I have the ever awesome MOD survival knife. This isn't just a standard MOD survival knife, remember, look at the video. Um, it's been completely reprofiled, completely changed out, new handle, liners, everything. It's absolutely awesome bit of kit. Yeah, and that is my winter loadout. Something that I'm possibly going to add to my winter loadout, possibly, I'm unsure, um, maybe for the deepest, darkest winter, is a Helicon Tech Swagman roll, a uh, Helicon Tech Swagman roll, kind of jacket slash sleeping bag thing. Um, I'm looking at that just now, but I'm undecided. I do love Helicon Tech's kit, but I'm asking myself, am I being a gear pest? Do I really need it? Um, but I'll decide, and that would maybe be the only addition. So, this is generally what I would carry year round, because it, it rains any day of the year here. It can rain at any time, so a waterproof jacket's always a bonus. Sometimes you can just get cold really quickly, so a ruby hoodie, I always have one on me. For how light this is, I mean, it weighs nothing, what, why would I not have it? Um, but everything else, again, I always have with me. I always go slightly tool heavy, like my saw, my axe and a big knife, because tools are hard to replicate in the wild, aren't they? It's hard to make a saw, it's hard to make an axe. So yeah, I always go slightly tool heavy. Um, and then, like I say, I always have a quality belt knife. And I've got my Leatherman and my axe and my big knife and stuff. So, yeah. This is my kind of winter, autumn, winter loadout. But if I'm really honest, this is my kind of just year-round loadout. This is what I have with me. And predominantly, I've used... Well, not predominantly, because I've got a load of rucksacks. And like I say, I'm a gear pest. I like to flip between them. Um, I, 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 I've been using my LK35 that I modified a lot. So yeah, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. What you carry in the woods is completely up to you, and, and, and how you do it is completely up to you. I think though there is a few universal truths. You should always have a waterproof layer, you should always have a warm layer, you should always have a tarp, a means of carrying water. Personally, I think you should go tool heavy because tools are hard to replicate, and first aid kit. Get, don't just go and buy a £200 or $300 first aid kit and think that's you golden. Get the training in a first aid kit. I always refer back to it and it's because just the horror of being out in the wild and I see loads of people doing solo overnighters and all that sort of stuff. The horror of doing a solo overnighter and burying a knife into your leg or into your body and not having the adequate kit to try and help yourself while you waited and rescue would be a nightmare. Do you know what I mean? Like, take somebody with you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, I always, always kind of get the best kit and the best training you can. So, yeah, as always, I'm Stuart. He's Alan. You're awesome. See you in the next one.